Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this lesson, we're going to study how to solve proportions. Now, what is a proportion, first of all? Well, it is where you have a ratio equaling another ratio. Here's two examples. One ratio is 2 to 3, and then another ratio is 4 to 6, and they are equal. So that's a proportion. You can, of course, think of them as fractions too. 2 thirds equals 4 sixths. Here's another proportion. T over 7 equals 4.1 over 10.8. It is a proportion because you can think of those as ratios. The ratio of t to 7 is the same as the ratio of 4.1 to 10.8. And we encounter proportions lots, many times, in real-life situations, such as prices per pound, or speed, or gas mileage. There are just a few examples of where we encounter proportions in real life. Okay, and there are several ways to solve proportions, the main way being cross-multiplying. But I'm going to show you two other ways, too, that work if your numbers are easy enough. One would be that we can make a table. For example, let's say I am given this proportion to solve, and I can think of these two ratios, 45 to x and then 120 to 8, as being here in this table. 120 to 8 here, and I'm thinking of two quantities here. For example, maybe these top numbers, the 45 and 120, maybe they are dollar amounts, such as a person's pay or something. And then these are hours, for example. And then this would mean $120 per 8 hours, right? And this would mean $45 per X hours, unknown amount of hours. So I would put this into the table. This is my unknown that I need to find out. And then I can think different things. For example, I could take half of this. If it is $60, then it would be 4 hours, right? And then I could take half of 60 and get 30. $30 for 2 hours. Take half of that and get $15 for 1 hour. And then surely by this point you can see what goes here, right? For $45, you would have to work 3 hours, okay? So x equals 3. Another way is to think through equivalent fractions. Equivalent ratios or equivalent fractions. And for example, let's say we have this kind of a proportion, we need to solve x. And you can use the same principle as you are already familiar with from equivalent fractions. If you have seen in your school books this kind of a problem, there's an empty spot here, and this was in your fraction math. And so how did you solve this? It is the same kind of problem as here, right? And we did it this way. We think what number is 3 multiplied by to get 9. And then we use that same number here. So over here I have 100 and 150, so I can see this number 1 and a half times is 150. So I take this number one and a half times to put here in place of x, right? And so that would be 27. This could be, for example, let's say we are told that 18 people out of 100 do something, get the flu each year or something. 18 people out of 100, that's a ratio. And then we are asked, so how many people would you expect to get the flu in a group of 150 people? And now lastly, the main way to solve proportion is by cross-multiplying. Now that means that we multiply crisscross. 5 gets multiplied by 18 and then x gets multiplied by 31. And those are equal. In other words, I get 31 times x is equal to 5 times 18. Like that. And now I solve this equation using normal techniques for solving equations. In, in this case, of course, you need to divide both sides by 31. So we will get x equals, now this one here is 90, and then divided by 31. And I calculated it, and it is about 2.9032. Should be about, okay. It's rounded. I'll solve another proportion here. I just threw together some random numbers. And the principle is the same, no matter whether the numbers are negative, it still works. You multiply those two, and you multiply those two. And of course, you can write them, for example, this way, 2.5 times 3.1 equals 
minus 6 times a. And then if you want to, you can switch a so that it is on this side. Or you can start just from the beginning, write your equation so that you get minus 6a on this side. It doesn't matter. But then at this point, you need to then divide both sides by this number, by negative 6. So we get a equals 2.5 times 3.1 divided by negative 6. And then that is about minus 1.292.